This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ and I'm a Texas. This is November 26, 2023. Sunday evening message. There are many ways God pays back sin on earth. Many ways God pays back sin on earth. Galatians 6, 7 through 10. Now what we want to recognize is in our study is we want to make sure we're very clear on what a sin is. And so one of the things we have to remember in our mind and accept in our heart is the Lord says some very unusual things maybe in our mind concerning how sin is lined up. And so we understand that he has a method and it isn't anything he's guessing at. It is what he has taught us through his word. And we see in uh, 1 John 3 and 4. The Bible tells us in the epistles, 1 John 3 and 4, Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And so we look at the word sin, G266. It just means sin. Isn't that amazing? Uh, offense. So the one who determines that the sin is God, not you and I. I'm going to determine who, what, uh, what sin is. Uh, and so... Uh, one of the things that the Lord points out uh, is concerning a very important thing, and that is he identifies that has to be a law there, and that law will be the thing that determines what is a sin. Romans three and twenty, Romans three and twenty. Therefore, by the deeds of law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Isn't that lovely? By the law is the knowledge of sin. So therefore, you have to go to the law of God to find out what is sin. Look at Romans 5.13. This is something you have struggled with with your brethren. Because they will begin to make up laws. And we can't do that. Romans 5.13. For until the law, sin was in the world. Now watch. Until the law, sin was in the world. It says, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. That's a very important scripture. When there is no law, the word imputed is G1677. The sense of account, to reckon, and that is a tribute. There is no attribute, no, no sin attribute to you when there's no law. Brethren, that's very important to remember because that's how you go to hell when you make up a law. When you create, a, even to yourself, if you create a law to yourself and you say, okay, if I do this, I'm going to sin against God. The law that says, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. I have to tell you what's sin because now you're teaching yourself doctrine that you came over to help you fear me and you're not going to fear me. So he's very clear here to reckon, to take an inventory. There is no inventory on you. If the law does not labor some of sin. We need to remember that because what these people are going to do in this lesson is straight up sin. All these individuals, though they had gotten away with sin, not repenting of, some thought God did not see them. Look at Ezekiel chapter 8. See, this group thinks, he didn't see me, I got away with it. But it isn't someone telling you something is sin, they knew what we're doing is a sin against God. They just thought we were so smooth, he didn't see us. Ezekiel chapter number 8. And we're going to look at, if you would be so kind, verse number 12. Then said he unto me, son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel are doing? These are the older leaders in Israel who are sinning in the dark. Every man in the chamber of his Im imagery. So this is how he thinks. For they say the Lord said does not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. So if you sin, that's what they got to say. If you sin in your mind, nobody has to see it. You just sin in your mind and God labels you. So you have to, that's why you have to know what sin is. It isn't a thought just coming in your mind. It's you embracing it. You wanting the thought there. You giving it a seat and a rule. And now you began to open it up. 
like a package to see how can I carry this out. That's when you send it. It doesn't matter whether the brethren understand that. No one cares what the brethren understand, literally. Uh, Ezekiel 9 and verse 9. Here's another here. Ezekiel 9 and 9. Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. Now what Solomon warned us of? Don't be over much wicked. See, that's a difference. What the Lord said that man wasn't far from the kingdom when he answered him correctly. He wasn't far. Okay. You have to understand you can't get so far from God that you start making sinners look like saints <laughs> because you, you're over. And this is Israel. They got so wild. And the land is full of blood. And the city full of perverseness. For they say the Lord hath forsaken the earth. And the Lord said it's not. Now that's in their mind. And so the Lord says you see what they're doing Ezekiel. Some thought God did not hear them. Some thought God cannot do anything. Some thought God won't do anything. Remember what self a man sought. That shall he also reap. Let's go to our text. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. See, we repeat a statement and then we read the answer. Galatians 6 and 10, 7. Here. Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived, so you can deceive yourself. God is not mocked for whatsoever man sought, that shall he also reap. If you sow the wrong seed, you'll be punished. You'll be punished. So if you add to God's word, you're going to get punished. You take away from God's word, that's your seed. You're going to be punished. He says, For he that sowed to the flesh shall of the flesh reap. Corruption. But he that saw it to the spirit shall the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well doing, as William read for us, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Verse 10. As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of So here we have a system set up whereby when you sow seed, you should be doing good to all men, but you should make an extra effort, especially to take note of the saints of God, so you make sure that you minister unto them. Now, we think God will pay us back in the same way we distribute. That's one of the flaws of the man. The bad seed. However, the payback can come in errors we thought not of. Look at Sennacherib, uh, 2 Kings chapter 18. He's not a member of the Lord's belief system, but he is an enemy. But this is one of the sad things about the people of the world and saints. They think somehow God doesn't regulate the rest of the world. God regulates marriages between unbelievers. He regulates because he holds you accountable. He regulates. How do we know? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11 says those who were baptized in Corinth, some of them had been fornicators and adulterers. There we go. That means God was engaging their marriage. That's such a lie when brothers say God doesn't regulate their marriage. Why would a Corinthian be held accountable uh, for marriage coming down? Because Adam and Eve showed you what to do. Brother, there's nothing beyond the grasp and understanding of people. If you're walking the wrong way, the Lord will send someone to tell you what to do right before he lets you die. That's the, we don't keep track of who all people meet. That's ridiculous to think that way. So here's Sennacherib. He is a very powerful ruler uh, of the kingdom that he is ruling. And he is in opposition back and forth with Hezekiah. He has Hezekiah very nervous to make Hezekiah do some very stupid things in panic. And we'll read about that. So he doesn't realize that God is going to pay him back in a different way than he's trying to destroy this particular nation. So 2 Kings 18, 1. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abby, the daughter of Zechariah. See, this is the way the, the Lord lets you know. He tells you, I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you the people's name and everybody I want you to know. So 2 Kings 18 and verse 3. And he did that which was right inside the Lord according to all that David his father did. 
He removed the high place and break the images and cut down the grove and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it and called it Nehushta. So they kept Moses' serpent that he made for them to look at and flipped it and started worshiping. See, this is one of the sad things about human beings. Now, you take something that God used for good and just told y'all keep it. You're supposed to remind you of the greatness of the exodus out of Egypt. You take it and burn incense to it and start worshiping the thing. It's ridiculous. So he burnt it. He made sure they'll never get to do that again. He says uh, he trusted the Lord of God of Israel so that after him was none like him among kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. David is not as strong as Hezekiah. Does everybody get that? Great King David. He's different, but he's going to pull some foolishness out. But he's not going to do the stuff David did. But he does pull off some foolishness out of panic. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered with himself, and he went forth. Notice he prospered. That's important. That's what we're talking about. Saints that self-destruct. You must learn to prosper and keep God first and not lose it. You must learn to prosper because the very thing unless you prosper him can cause you have it. And he's not going to keep you broke. He's going to let you prosper. If the Lord thinks if you had a prosperous life and it would send you to hell, he's going to let you prosper. He's going to let you know because you're not, you're not worthy to come to heaven. You don't know how to handle stuff. That's what he says. You don't know how to handle it. So I, I'm going to let you fail because you don't deserve me. I'm going to give you something and I want you to handle it. Why? Because number one, it's your test number two. Others can watch you handle prosperity, and everybody keeps getting taught each generation. You got to learn to handle prosperity, brother. Uh, he says, and he, re he rebelled against the king of Assyria. Watch this move, and served him not. Now watch what happens. He smote the Philistines even unto Gaza and the borders thereof from the top of the watchers to the fence city came to pass in the fourth year of Hezekiah, which was the Seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel. See, the book is telling you what's going on with the ten tribes, what's going on with the two tribes. That Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. Now look at that. And at the end of three years, they took it. Even the, in the sixth year of Hezekiah, then in the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria sank. So now you got this. Assyrian movement coming against Israel. They're not going to stop here. They want more. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria and put them in Hala and in Habor by the river Gozar and the cities of me. He took them all prisoners. That's a lot of area, man. Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God. That's why they lost. Did not obey his voice, but transgressed his covenant. How could they transgress a covenant unless they knew what it was? They have to be taught. And all that Moses served the law commanded and will not hear them nor do them. I don't want to hear it and I don't want to do it. Verse 13. And the 14th year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fence of Judah and took them. Now, now, uh, so, we had, <laughs> so we had this other fellow, Shalmanasseh. He attacks the north and now... This guy, who is now the king, Sennacherib, same place, Assyria. We got a new king on the scene. He says, I'm going for the other cities. I'm fixing to hit the south. Why is that important? Because he's going to come in and scare them up. When the enemy comes to you and starts telling you, I'm going to take you over. Don't think God's going to protect you. You're supposed to know what to say. You're supposed to know what to do. You're supposed to repeat the words of God. So he says, uh... And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria. Look what he does to Lachish, saying, I have offended. Now remember, let's slow down. Let's slow down. Verse 7 says he served him not, right? Now look, verse 14. He gets nervous. He takes the fence city. This is a city that's staved up with fences around it. It's organized. He took it. So Hezekiah knows, I guess I'm next. He sends a letter to him. I have offended. Return from me. That which thou puttest on me will I bear. 
And the king of Assyria pointed out to Hezekiah, the king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Now look what he does. That's why Hezekiah starts to sniff. He says, I need you. This is a lot of money, saying This is a lot of money. I need 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. If you don't want me to come in and whoop you. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord. Did y'all see that? Is that righteous? Of course, overall, his life, he does what God says. Overall, but here is a glimpse of what Hezekiah does wrong because he fears the enemy coming up on me. So I'm going to sell out. When you go around the lost, you do not sell out. Amen. You do not let them threaten you. We'll take what you got. And you have to let them know, I'm going to talk to God about you. You better leave me alone. You have to understand, you don't run and you don't start giving them your stuff. The gold and the silver of God. So look what happens here. He says, uh, gave him all that he found out God and in the treasure of the king's house. Now he gave his own stuff and the house of the Lord. And at that time, Hezekiah did cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord. Now is that what the Lord wanted him to do? Did you notice he didn't talk to God, did you? Let's just get the hacking. Let's start to cut. That's what saints do. Cut off God. Cut off the blessings God gave. Chop it off. I'm scared. Chop it off. And then you don't have nothing left. And then you want God to rescue you. He will leave you flat on your back. But the idea is that Hezekiah has to learn. And from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. He overlaid the pillars. And then he goes and gives the guy. He never talks to God. He never prays about it. That's no record. He doesn't go to the prophets. He just starts chopping up stuff. They go get me. I got to get rid of this. What God gave him. I got to get rid. You're going to get rid of. Listen to me. You're going to get rid of all your blessings because you're afraid of the enemy. That's ridiculous, brethren. Verse uh, 17. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rapsiris and Rapshaka from Lachish. To King Hezekiah with a great noise against Jerusalem. Now, y'all remember, Lachish is one of their cities. That's why I say he took the fence. You also hear Saul in reference to this. It has become the enemy city. You see how they let them whoop them? And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool. Look at the Lord telling them exactly where they went. Which is in a highway by the Fuller's Field. Man, that's so detailed. You can go back there and look at it. They got historical markers in your land. You go back and look, this this, this, where they, this where they cheesed up as a car. Right here. Scared him up. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, come the son of Hilkiah, which was over the house, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, and Rabshakeh, Said unto them, Speak you now to Hezekiah. Thus said the great king. Now he's telling his servants, You go tell your king, the great king of Assyria, what confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Now watch, he's calling him out. Thou sayest, But they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom dost thou trust? That thou rebellest against me? So see, in the initial onset, verse 7 says, he said, I'm not going to serve you. So they started taking the cities, and they come and he's coming at them. He said, give me some stuff, pay some tribute to me. Sennacherib's people. So he come, nah, nah, you think, you think the enemy, oh man, I love this story, praise God. You think the enemy going to light up on you because you give him some stuff back? I'm going to give back my blessings God gave me. I'm going to give it back. He coming for more. He's like a hog that can't get full. He said, yeah, by the way, you're talking all this. No, but you wasn't going to serve up. Who, who you got confidence in? You, you, you sent me all the chopping up pieces of the Lord's house? So his chest is swole now. So now he sends his people swole. Who do you think you are? In the first place, we have to go through all this drama. Telling me you're not going to serve me. That's the message. You think Satan ain't going to do that? You can start giving him back. You can quit going to church. Or you can start making up your own rules. Say no one more. I want you to get down and dirty with me. You up here talking about you a child of God. I want you to get down and dirty with me. You think you can run and hide from me? Satan going to find you. Your sin's going to find that. He's going to find if you're afraid. I don't care where you run. Satan going to hunt you down like a cat chasing a mouse. 
He's going to sniff. He went this way. And he's going to get her or you. Him. Either one. So what happens now? He says, uh, uh, you said my words are just blank. Just, just, just blank. They don't mean nothing. Is he rebelling against me? Verse 21. Now behold, thou trust upon a staff of the bruised reed, even upon Egypt. Look how Egypt has fallen. On which if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce. He said, Egypt is so weak, it's like a bruised reed. If you lean on it because you tied it, it'll pierce your hand. It's useless. He said, he ended up cutting you. He's talking bad about Egypt. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, unto all that trust him. He's calling our nation just in case there's a cow want to trust him. He said, that's what you're trusting in? But if you say unto me, we trust in the Lord our God. Now, this is where he messes up. Sennacherib's boys are repeating the words of Sennacherib. 22 is why they run into trouble. The ship hits ground. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, it is not that he whose high places, whose altars Hezekiah had taken away. Remember, what does Hezekiah, see this is how ignorant the denomination of the world is. He's heard the report that Hezekiah has torn down what his wicked daddy put up. But his wicked daddy did not put that up to the Lord God. They are so ignorant like lost people are. They think Hezekiah has been disobeying the very God he trusts. No, he, he did the God he trusts well. This is how stupid they are. You're dealing with stupid people in denominationalism. They misunderstand. Well, ain't that the same God that you told us that? That's for a false God he told us. You see that mistake, bro? That's how stupid. That's why God going to plummet them. Because they're ignorant. They got the stories crossed. So he said, ain't that the same God that you told us stuff? No, that was false God they offered that to. And so look what happens. He says, clearly, and had said to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. So he's saying, Hezekiah run us up. He thinks Hezekiah is disrespecting God and not calling on him. No, he's not. You're supposed to worship in Jerusalem. That's how ignorant he is. That's like looking at a gospel preacher and say he's trusting in God. You trust in God? Ain't you the one that told him stop beat bass singing to the very God you trust? Ain't you the one that told him to take away the musical instrument? How, how, how can you trust that God? No, you're supposed to stop beat bass singing. And you're supposed to not have music. You know, that would be the gospel preacher doing the will of the law. Hezekiah is so weak, he's going to get scared. Let's watch and see. You can't be that scared, brethren. You can't be. Verse 23. Now, therefore, I pray thee, give pledges to my Lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver the 2,000 heart. Watch this move. Boy, y'all got to see this. If thou be able on thy part to set riders upon him. He said, I give you 2,000 horses. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and horses? He said, he said, if you hook me up with the threat I put on y'all, the money you, I told you that my master said, he said, I give you 2,000 horses. You can find somebody to ride them. He says, this you need to do. He said, because my master got captains, y'all can't whoop one of them. That's what he said. Y'all can't whoop any of them. And you're going to try to go get horsemen and stuff from Egypt? I'm telling you, they're weak. That's why he, this is his story. Listen at this massive bunch of nonsense that he's talking about. That's how the denomination world come at you. If y'all love the Lord so much, why don't y'all do this? If y'all love the Lord so much, why don't y'all do that? Why don't y'all feed people? Because that's not our mission. Ask Jesus why he didn't feed them people that morning. We know what we're doing. Uh, why don't y'all speak in tongues? Because nobody can do that. You lie when you do it. And see, this they don't understand. This is what he's doing. He's bringing up a bunch of false arguments about what Hezekiah did right and labeling it he's actually went against God. This, 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 this spokesman and his king are two idiots, both of them. And that's what you're dealing with when you're dealing with people online and talking to them at the grocery store talking about God. Y'all know nothing about God. You don't know, it's like Jesus told that woman, you don't even know who you worship. He did not have said that. You don't even know who you worship. So he says, uh, am I now come up with the Lord? No, watch this here. Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy? Look what he said. Well, he See, this what got him in trouble. He's talking trash against God. Just let them keep on talking. They're going to talk their way into getting severely punished by God. Let them shoot that ball thumb. 
I'm highly blessed and highly favored. Yeah, you're highly favored to be put in hell, but you're definitely not blessed. Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Did you hear that? I want y'all to read that one again. Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Y'all hear what he's saying? Then said Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Sheba, Shebna, and Joah, and Rapsika, speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it, and talk not with us in the Jews' language. In the ears of people that are on the wall. So the people on the wall, he said, he said hey, we speak both Hebrew and we speak your Syrian language. Just talk to us. Just tell us. But he's talking because he wants the people on the wall to get nervous. Did you hear this fool say in verse 25 that the Lord is with him? Are y'all checking this lesson? Check this lesson. He's telling them the Lord is with him. Like the denominational world tells you the Lord with them. Yeah. Brethren, y'all don't see this trash. Boy, you got to really watch, man. God will teach you like a baby and let you be solid strong if you just look at his old self. He'll tell you, man, they've been talking crazy to y'all since the day I brought y'all to safety. And we are the children of this group. Paul called them our forefathers in 1 Corinthians 10. That's not to the Jews. That's to all the righteous. And we need to understand it. This is a bunch of trash talk. That's what I wanted to teach you. Look further down and see. But Rapshika said unto them, had my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Had not he not sent me to the men with sin on the wall? He said, I want to talk. That's why I speak Hebrew. I was going to tell the ones on the wall, bail on y'all, because Hezekiah going to get y'all killed. That they may eat. Look what he says. That they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you. He said, we're going to whoop y'all so bad. When you use the restroom, that's going to be the only food you got. And if you want some water, you have to drink your own piss. That's what he used the word, piss. <laughs> this is a trash-talking fool. He just said, the Lord with him. This boy that lost his mind. It's a magnificent story. Now watch what happens. He says, then Ramshakar stood and cried with a loud voice, and the Jews they see he gonna make sure they hear him and spake, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus said the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. He's talking in Hebrew. See, see that's what you gotta watch. He said, Dude, I speak both night. That's why he sent me. I speak Hebrew, and I'm born Syrian. You born Hebrew, and you speak Syrian. But I'm saying in Hebrew to the people on the wall. I'm gonna let them know, rebel. Y'all better tell this Hezekiah, give me what I'm asking for before I have y'all eating your dung and drinking your piss. That's an awful talk. So he said, thus said the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the law. I told y'all he started talking stupid in verse number 25. And he's been talking stupid ever since. And he's been targeting the most high God. This boy going to get ate up and his master. See, because that's one of the terms that's used when you have a king over you. He's called your master. As Naaman said, when I go down my master, he's talking about the guy that's over him. See, he's a captain of all the army. He only got one master, and that's the king. They refer to your king as your master. And that's why I have to go down. He said, man, look, at you, my captain of the army. We fixing to praise this false God. You better drop down with me. And Naaman said, my heart going to be on God. Elisha said, go in peace. You can't let nobody, boy, why y'all go to, to, to funerals at the nominated church? Because we're going to come to family. But our heart on God, we're not listening to that nonsense y'all saying. And you can't tell us we can't. Got to use this book, brethren. Talk from the book. God will be with you. If you talk some nonsense from your own mouth, he's going to let you get embarrassed. And so therefore, now the guy that lied and said, nobody can stop me. Then he lied and said, God sent me. Now, now, God has sent foreign kings to work, but he's a liar. God didn't send him. He just, he just acting like denominational people do. The Lord is with me. Oh, he's with me. Truly blessed and highly favored. Man, the Lord not with you. The Lord not with you. You can't let no denomination of person make you think the Lord is with him, brethren. Come on. God bless you. I know you won't. He says, uh, 
Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in law. Verse 30 saying, the law will sure deliver, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Syria. See, he told him, the Lord sent me. The dude is saying, the Lord sent Assyria to jump y'all. He's a lie. He's lying. He, that's what's wrong with Hezekiah. You haven't been praying to God. You haven't been talking to a prophet. You just start cutting up on the house of God. You start giving away all your gifts back God then gave you, and now you're broken. Now you're crying. You should be broke. Chopping on the Lord. You should have asked him, what do I do? He's going to finally ask him. Amen. But he should have asked me at first. He wouldn't have disfigured the Lord's house. That's what a lot of brethren do. Can we be based? No, you're disfiguring the Lord's house. Can we bring in interest? No, you're disfiguring the Lord's house. Can we bring our books and that brother so-and-so said his book? No, like brother Fritz and I'm talking about that. This is not Walmart. Go take your book to Barnes and Noble. If you can't sit at that, go on the corner and give them hot dogs and sell your book down. But don't bring it to the law. This is the house of, house of prayer. So we come for to praise the Lord and ask him for blessings. And so therefore he's very clear. He says so clearly. He said he should not deliver you out of the hand. Verse 31. Hearken not to Hezekiah. For, the, for thus said the king of Assyria. Make an agreement with me by a present. And come out to me. And then eat you every man of his own. Look at how he's talking like he's God. He said, you bring me the present, I'm telling y'all. I already got your sins. I got Lakeisha. I got a bunch of your fence cities you love. See, they, they got an army there, and they sent them from Lakeisha right down the street where you at because they done took over the city. Hezekiah is so scared and fearful. This is a shame. But nevertheless, he's going to get it right. He says, send me a present. And look how he talks. Then you'll eat of your own vine. Oh, doesn't he sound sweet and holy? And every one of his fig trees, you foreigner, you're not even a saint. And drink you every one of the waters of his cistern. Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land. A land of corn and wine. A land of bread and vineyards. Look what he's talking. A land of oil and a land of honey. Yes, <laughs> he thank you, God. That you may live and not die. And hearken not to Hezekiah when he persuaded you. Saying the Lord will deliver up. Boy, this boy lost his mouth. Let me tell you how I love this story. Look here. He's telling you, look. Y'all give me my present. Chop up the Lord house some more, because that ain't enough what you already gave. You talk too much. You made me too mad. So chop up some more. I get 2,000 hearts. You can have that food with Egypt. And then he says, clearly, uh, I'll let you eat your own vineyard. But he's telling you, I'm going to take you back captive to my land where it's really sweet honey and bread. They're already in the land of milk and honey. Somebody just said, we already got honey, fool. We don't need yours. We got the same bee. You got the same. We already got honey. But they so scared. That's how saints get scared. God help us. Let's read some more. He says uh, in verse uh, 33, had, now he starts comparing denominationalism to denominationalism. Had any other God of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? You hear that? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim, Hena and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Look at that. Who? Now look what he said. Look what he said. See, remember, they were worshiping those gods. Remember, they were worshiping him. He said, no. See, he's ignorant. He thinks all y'all gods are just weak, including the one Jehovah. They're just weak God. They ain't saved Samaria. So how your God? And then he already lied and said God sent him. See, that's a, boy, he's like a drunk man. But not on wine and not on strong drink. Who are they among all the gods of countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand? That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand. Now this is the message he bringing Sennacher once told. But the people held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's command was saying, ask him not. So Hezekiah did have some sense. Don't say nothing to him. Don't say nothing to him. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and shit. Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah with their clothes rent and told the words of Rap Shekha. They got their clothes tore up. Rip, rip, dude, he got us. He got us. We're going to get plummeted. Verse 9, chapter 19. Came to pass when the king Hezekiah heard that he rent his clothes. I see why y'all clothes tore. Rip, it's over for us. 
and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. Now he go the same house he been chopping off. Isn't this sad? This is your life. You get back all the stuff God got all the great blessings of some denominational sinner that got you cheesed up saying, Lord came, told me to tell you, you need to let your stuff go, baby. You serving mamma. I don't got nobody serving no mamma. I'm taking my blessing. You done gave it all. Now you broke. Now you got to go in the house of the Lord. You done ripped it all up. Now you got to go watch this and pray about you because you the house of the Lord. Remember, we're the temple of God. Now you got to go and pray. You done ripped up all your belief listening to this fool. Y'all got me? See how we bringing our home? And now you got to go, I'm empty, Lord. I'm, I'm confused. I'm like, I don't know what to do. The temple has been ripped up and your hands ripped it up. See? You done gotten the fornication and sin. Now you all ripped up. You done gave your blessings to the devil and you all ripped up. Now gold peeled off the wall. You're not pure anymore. Look at that. But nevertheless, God will listen because he says, okay, at least you know who to come to when you have messed up. Like this is a cause. You say, when we mess up, fess up. You need to confess you have messed up. And so therefore he goes to the house of the law and he sent Elijah, which was uh, 2 Kings 19 to over the house of and Shepherd the scribe and the elders of the priest covered with sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet the son of Amos. Here we go. Now you're going to the right. You should have went there before you start chopping up on the Lord's house. This it's not too late. And they said unto him, Thus said Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy. For the children are come to birth and there is no strength to bring forth. It's like a child finna be born. The mama can't have strength. We're in trouble. And it may be. The Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, see, so he called him his master, and sent to approach the living God and reprove the words which the Lord thy God heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall you say to your master, see, it's calling now Hezekiah their master. It's just a term that's used that I'm the master, I'm the king, I'm over you. Like we do to the Lord. We're his servants. He's our master. Well, this is where they get the understanding from, from, from the, the way they conducted themselves to each other. Thus said the Lord, be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard. Now God is talking with which the servants of the king of Syria have blasphemed me. I told y'all the boy spoke against God. Behold, I will send a blast upon him. Man, I love this story. And he shall hear a rumor and shall return to his own land. And I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. I told you he's going to kill you or punish you sometime in a different way you can't see coming. That's why I want to take it to the Lord in prayer. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna. Now here's Sennacherib. He whooping up on Libna. He whooping up on Libna. For he had heard that he was departed from the quiche. And when he had heard of Teraka, king of Ethiopia, behold, he has come out to fight against thee. He sent messenger again unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive thee. You hear this fool? Serving, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered to the hand of the king of Syria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Syria have done to all the land by destroying them utterly and shall thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nation delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? He said, man, my daddy used to whoop y'all as Gozan and Haran and Reseph and the children of Eden which were in Thelassar. Why is the king of Hamath and the king of Arpah and the king of the cities of Sepharvim of Hena and Ivan? And Hezekiah received the letter of the hands of the messenger and read it and Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Do you do that sometimes? You get bad letters? Mm -hmm. Spread it, brother. I'm telling you. And fall down and pray. Say, Lord, you see what they're saying they're going to do to me. This is for real. Mm -hmm. Listen, brother. Sennacher is such a bad boy. He whooping. You know how bad the Ethiopians were? <laughs> he said, while I'm whooping them, you go going to tell Hezekiah because he's not, I'm going to whoop them and I'll be over there in a minute. That's how I tell I'm going to whoop them. Roll up on me. Tell us, you better get yourself together because I'm coming to him now. I just ain't mad. I sent messages there. Let me know I'm coming that way. God's not going to save you. That was, the first, that was the first and last mistake you made. Blaspheme God. All you got to do is shoot your mouth off against God. Add to his word and take away. Once you do that, God say, okay, excuse me, y'all. I got like this between me and him or me and her. 
I got it from this point on. And he's going to ravish your life like he's going to do him. You won't even see it coming. You're going to be surprised. Like Some of you already know the story. Verse 14, so he went to the house of the Lord, spread the letter. Verse 15, Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, God of Israel, which dwells between the cherubim, thou art the God, even thou alone, and all the kingdoms of the earth thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear, hear, open, Lord, thine eyes, and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which has sent, sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their land. He said, it's true. And have cast their gods in the fire, for they are no gods. But the work of men's hands, wood and stone, therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech you, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdom of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou art. Why you say this prayer from the jump? Why do saints do this? What is wrong with us? You're chopping on the Lord, I'm scraping stuff out, cutting door handles off. Took all the silver. Why did you say this prayer before? Why did you say this prayer before you started this mess? Talk the Lord how. Now you know you're fixing to get whooped anyway. And now you want to run to the Lord. That's all right. Have some sense about you. Do it. But you got to think at some point. The next episode in my life. I'm going to God first. No way else. I'm not chopping up nothing. I'm not giving no world back nothing. Like I'm keeping all my stuff. And I'm taking it to the Lord in prayer. Y'all not going to take what God has given me. You know what I'm saying? This is about money, man. Take your mom on money. I get some horses. It's about money, commerce. What did Jesus say about us? He said the children of the world are wiser than the children of light. They know how to connect with the man. My brother, friends, and others have talked about that. They got to connect. You got to know how to handle yourself in this world. I mean, you don't give up your stuff. Money is not no sin. You better step up. I'm going to talk to God about you. Stop yeah. chopping up stuff, giving up your blessing. God's looking at you, you're going to give up you. And then you went to my house too. You start giving him some of you, some of your belief system to that heretic saying, the Lord sent me. This dude is stupid. The Lord sent me to attack y'all. He thinks Israel is really stupid. And he says it in Hebrew to get them cheesed up. But let's see what happens. We're about to wrap this up. Verse 20. Then Isaiah, the son of Ammon, said to Hezekiah, saying, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, That which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. So watch, he goes to pray, and then Hezekiah gets the answer from Isaiah. Let me say what the Lord said. He told me you can't tell. I don't got to tell you what he said. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, had despised this. He said, this is what I think about. What I want you, girl, I want you to tell Sennacherib, I hate you. I despise you. And laugh through the scorn. <laughs> You're not coming to do nothing. The daughter of Jerusalem had shaken her head at the He's sad. You hear this answer? Like you telling your wife, you know, hey, 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 look here. Go shake your head at him and say, You ain't gonna do nothing. Y'all see this? Whom thou hast reproached and blasphemed. Who has thou reproached and blasphemed? Again, who has thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on high? Even against the Holy One of Israel. He said, you know who you're talking to? He said, that's what she going to say. The daughter of Israel. The nation. You know who you're talking to? Verse 23. By thy messengers, thou hast reproached the Lord. And hast said with the multitude of my chariots, I am come up to the height of the mountain. To the size of Lebanon. And will cut down the tall cedar trees. And the choice fir trees thereof and I will enter into the lodging of his borders and into the forest of his carmel. I have digged and drunk strange waters. This is what he's talking trash. And with the sole of my feet I have dried up the rivers of besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought the path that thou shouldest be to lay waste fence cities and to ruin heath. So he's saying this particular area, you saying you're going to come into my area? Well, I fenced up. You think I'm going to come up here and say I drank water from it? You lost your mind. That's what the Lord said. You think you're going to see this is what Israel is supposed to say to them. You think you're going to come in and take what the Lord set off for us? You're going to let somebody come in and take what the Lord gave you? You don't deserve it anyway. You need, you need to lose it. I mean that's sincere. The Lord gave you, you're going to let something dominational, criminal, 
come in and take that from you by you adhering in fear, giving them your silver and gold that God gave you, your silver and gold boss that God gave you, and start beat bass singing and playing instruments. You're going to give your silver and gold thoughts and start having women preaching, killing them and you. You think you're going to give up your silver and gold from the Lord house that's within you? Man, please. You better talk like the daughter of Zion and say, man, you think you're going to come up here and walk your feet in this land? Let's see. Now watch what happens. He says, therefore, the inhabitants were a small pile. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field and as the green earth, as the grass of the housetop, and as corn blasted before it grow up. But I know thy abode, the Lord said. I know where you live. Tell Sennacherib, I know where you live. And thy going out and thy coming in and thy rage against me. I know. I know about you talking smart to me. Talk about you, you, you in a potter's house with TDJs. Talk about we the church of Christ too. I know you rage against me. So we, can, we the church of Christ. No, you're not. You're not the church of Christ. Because thy rage against me and thy tumult is come up into my ears. Therefore, I will put, watch what he say, my hook in thy nose and my bridle in thy lips like a horse. And I will turn thee back by the way by which thou came. Now, this is what Hezekiah is supposed to send a message saying. This is what you're going to tell. This is the daughter. He's going to repeat, he repeat. The daughter say, mm, shake your head. You're not going to do nothing. Can you imagine a woman standing before an army, a strong man, go, you're not going to do nothing. <laughs> I'm laughing at you. he be like, girl, I'm going to cut you up. And then the Lord snatch you. My child is going to do this. a beautiful story. I love it. He says, Notice what he says, and this shall be a sign unto thee. You shall eat this year such things as grow themselves, and a second year that which spring of the same, and a third year sow ye and reap and plant vines and eat the fruits thereof. The Lord said, I'm proving y'all is going to happen. Y'all going to eat what you got now. You're going to plant some more. You're going to eat. See, he's intertwining the stories, and he starts talking back to Israel. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit up. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape out of my Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. His desire to make it happen. Therefore, see, what, what, what is this story for us? And this story to show you when someone starts trying to take from you what God gave you, well, the spiritual feeling, when someone tries to come against you and say, God sent me to do this to you, you like, must be out your mind. When, when they say, your God can't deliver you. He sent me to attack you. And you know, man, we didn't do nothing on this time. We on the good. What's going on? You know, already chopped up the Lord house. He's giving you grace on that. You got to get your mind back in gear and understand the Lord says, I got a purpose here. Why I'm going to get him because he's talking by me. And I need to let him say what he's going to say. And when I break him down, you're going to know not who to God. Because the Lord said, I done let him whoop everybody but me. He whooping on the Ethiopian so good. He telling y'all, go, go tell his guy I'm coming for him next. He is whooping the Ethiopian as a powerful nation. He like, I got him, but I'm coming to get you next. He's so confident. When I get through whooping them, I'm coming to get you. That's confident. He's not going to do nothing but die. So what he says is, he says here, for our Jerusalem shall go for the remnant. He claims that the zeal of the law will do it. He says, Verse 32, therefore said the law concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city. Now hear that? They right down the street in the key. He shall not come into this city. You won't have to fight it. He ain't going to make it. Nor shoot an arrow there. Not one arrow going to hit Jerusalem. Nor come before it with shield. He's not going to have nobody with shield. Y'all turn it back. Mm. Nor cast a bank against it. There will be no army set up. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return and shall not come into this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And you know what's going to happen? He got to get his army ready. He said, okay, okay. So they're talking trash like that to me. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to really plumbing it now. He thinks he's going to get up in the morning and go to battle. Message been delivered. So Sennacher, okay, hold on. Verse 30, we don't want to skip nothing. <laughs> he said, verse 34, for I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. He said, my sake and David, because he was a righteous man, and I told her I'm going to take care of this city for you. 
David died believing that. Look at verse 35. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out of the jail. I told you, I go, it's no army. He's not going to get you with what you think, what you fight with. Amen. He don't have to get you with that. He's going to get you with something else. You may be acting crazy, disrespecting God, adding and taking away from his word, talking crazy, and you think it's going to be some debate you're going to do with some saint. Somebody, something happened to somebody in your family, and he snaps like a tree. Pop, you can't function no more. I just like, y'all, I'm not, I'm not going to be. Yeah, because he got you. And look, look what he's going to do. He said, while they were sitting, the angel of went out and smoked in the camp of Assyria a hundred, four score, five thousand. 185,000. The angel killed 185,000 of his soldiers while they slept. Y'all got that? The angel, the invisible being. Now, whether he had a sword, he had took off somebody's body. We know one thing. Everybody was dreaming and sleeping good, and they woke up dead. Amen. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. You see what happened? He looks at all the people that said, who could have done this? Listen, nobody woke up. 185,000 men. You're not alone. It takes to run to 185,000 men. Look, your mind is fried eggs. So what does he do? So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. Y'all see where he's at? I see Nineveh? Ninevites? And it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, his God. He went to church with his God, to the denominational church. That Adramalek and Sharazer, his sons, smote him with a sword. Look here. He never thought his son was going to kill him. I'm at my house praying. This rock. What's, what's going on? Wow. Both of them come. Let's go kill daddy. Bam. Wow. You would have never thought. You would have just went and killed him if you thought that was the people God was going to send for you. Mm. You up there fighting, whooping on the East Dover and this guy. I'm on my way. And, and your boy has killed you. Dear friend, we pay back. He said, and they escaped into the land of Armenia, and as Sar had done, his son reigned in his stead. So the two boys that killed him, they took out. We hate that. Let's go. The other son, I'm on roof. <laughs> what you gonna do? Your sons killed you? You never thought of that. But you were talking trash. The Lord sent me. He can't deliver y'all. Don't let us God fool. He told every lie he could. After a while, your lies start bumping into each other. You gotta go, man, this dude lie. First he say, no God deliver. Then he say, okay, he told me come attack y'all. What? You know, like, I give y'all, give me my money, I give you 2,000 horses. Don't be fooling with Egypt. Dude, you're not running, you're not going. You think y'all, you clowns? Why I said, just wag your head. I ain't gonna do nothing. Hezekiah comes and senses and he talks to God, which is a thing he should have did in the beginning. What's the message of the story? Brethren, do the first thing right. Go to God first. If you've already messed up and start scraping stuff out of you and handing off to the denomination, foolish beliefs they got, not turn back to God and say, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I can't defeat. Put the letters that then came here from this nonsense. You see these lies they teach against you? Destroy them. Destroy them out of my mind. Get this trash out of my mind so I can serve you properly without fear. Hope you understand that, brethren. God bless you. We have some more stories to show you how the law will pay you back right here on this earth. Let's look at the will of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And let's look at verse number 3. 1 Corinthians 15 3. It's time for the gospel to be taught. And opportunity for you to be saved. Father, let me first of all that which y'all saw receive, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He goes to the list of who saw him. Mark chapter number 16 and verse 15 says, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and baptized shall be saved, he that believes not shall be damned. Acts chapter 2 and verse 36. If we're not supposed to be teaching what you need to be saved, I don't know what's wrong with Peter. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assured that God had made the same Jesus who crucified both Lord and Christ. When they heard this, they were pricking their hearts, said to Peter, the rest of the men and brethren, what shall we do? 
Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, everybody, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you, to your children, and all that are fathers, even as men as the Lord our God shall call. And men of the word that he testified as all, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized in the same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfast in the apostle doctrine. In fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. Acts 2.47, praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. I encourage you to pray for your wicked brethren. Because they're talking a lot of evil stuff against God. We're not going to. One, one preacher told a family that asked him privately about why you're not giving a plan of salvation. He said, we don't do that here, but you're welcome to go to another church. See, he likes Sennacherib. I got plenty of money. The members eat out of my hand. But you don't know what's going to take you out. Because it's going to get you without you having any knowledge of it. Who would thought your own kids would kill you? Why are you praying in your God's house? There you go. No army, no Israelite, your own kids. So I'm like, hey, I'm going to kill your army. I'm going to send one of my, one angel, one angel to kill your army. And I'm going to kill you. By the hands of your kid. Well, you don't want to play with God at all. He's not to be played with. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized in the one body. What's the body of the church? Colossians 1 18. Will we be Jews or Gentile? Will the modern friend have all been made to drink into one spirit? Will it save me? Oh yes. 1 Peter 3 21. The like figure wearing to even baptism is also now save us. How? Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. What gives it to Paul? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And where is he at? Who's going to heaven on the right hand of God? Angel, authority, and powers. Be made subject unto him. What does Revelation say about faithfulness? Revelation 2, 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That you may be tried. If you have tribulation 10 days, be all faithful in the death, I will give thee a crown of life. He said, well, preacher, I already been baptized. Hold on. There's a plate of gospel waiting for you. Acts chapter 19 and verse number 1. This is what you need to remember. Those that are baptized into denomination. What do I mean by that? Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu. Acts 19, 1, it came to pass that while apostles at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard what there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? They said unto them, John's baptism. Now, why isn't that good enough for Paul? Because it's not good enough for Jesus no more. We passed the book of Acts. We're Acts chapter 2 now. And we have a new system of salvation. And Paul said, John truly baptized, baptism, repentance, saying to the people that should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, uh, baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The same brethren that's not given a plan of salvation. One of the reasons you got to understand that some of those same brothers believe that baptism is not necessary once you've already been baptized. They have been attacked. By people calling them Campbellites instead of them having sense enough to say, well, you know, Alexander Campbell was a member of the church. They started to quit doing the plan of salvation and stop baptizing. But them and the children that's with them going to all die lost. Touch. See, the problem with God, like Henry says down on the radio, what's the big deal about a piece of furniture, wood, with some gold slapped on it? That if a man touch it, it kills him. Because God said, don't touch it, unless you're a Levite. That's why. And God said, you don't respect my word. Why would I want you? You don't fear me? You know, well, well, what is it we don't touch? All right, God, now I was at old bed Edom house for a long time. He didn't touch it. Why did somebody go out there? Let's wipe it off. Old bed Edom obviously said, don't touch the ark. Don't get around and stumbling and falling. Stay away. His house was blessed. Got to know what to do, brother. Don't touch this nonsense. A nonsense idea is, well, there is no law, there is no transgression. Don't go making stuff up. May God bless you. If you're here, you're not a member of the church, stay standing. When we sit down and listen to the message, test the word more under the topic, the title, and keep touching it, and it will take you to where you have the phone numbers, two different congregations will guide you where you need to be baptized. You're dealing with issues in life. You can call the same numbers. We'll counsel with you. Be pro-life. Promote life. Yours, those around you. 
those who want to live, who want to have a life where God can work with them and teach them, be promoting spiritual life. You don't have to be no preacher. Just tell the people you know and love about God. Live it before them. And don't add a takeaway from his word. He'll be so glad to see you at the judgment. He'll embrace you and be thankful that you understood you can be with him forever. See, the Lord is happy. Not that he needs you. He's glad you understood. I did all this for you. I'm so glad that you're with me. Because I want you to experience me. That's what the law wants for you. And that's what he wants for me. Whatever you need in your life, come now together. We stand and sing heaven's invitation. Tender.